a Hall of Fame slugger, original Mets broadcaster, and fan favorite who continues to call games on SNY, Ralph Kiner. The one great thing about Ralph is Ralph was always ready for a story. He said, well, I'd like to off with Elizabeth Taylor. Ralph's been famous since he was a teenager. I mean, he, he went out with, with Janet Lee and Elizabeth Taylor. Despite never having played an inning as a Met, he is as important a figure in this organization as just about anybody. If somebody they want to have a perfect life, that would be the way to do it, being an announcer and being in New York City. For 50 years, Mets fans have been lucky to listen to a Baseball Hall of Famer describe and analyze Mets games. Ralph Kiner, an original Met, has been in the booth since 1962. His unique ability to tell all kinds of baseball stories and talk about his wonderful life has made him a first-class broadcaster all the way. Today, we celebrate Ralph Kiner's 50 amazing years. Ralph, you did have a great career. Now, what do you think about the season in the booth? Well, of course, Lindsay, I'm looking forward to it very much. And welcome back to the National League. Casey, you know it is the big league. That's and the true. National League has always been my favorite. It's certainly going to be a pleasure to be watching your teams play, and it's going to be a wonderful pleasure to work with Lindsey Nelson and Bob Murphy, and I'm looking forward to every minute of it. In 1962, Major League Baseball welcomed the New York Mets into the National League, and at that time, the Mets welcomed Ralph Kiner into their broadcast booth. And I got a call from George Weiss, who was the president of the newly formed New York Mets. And he asked me if I'd be interested in doing the broadcast for the Mets. And I said, well, if I can get out of my contract, I'd love to come to New York. And that happened, and I got, got into New York, and that's my start with the, with the Mets from day one. And they had Lindsey Nelson, who had already signed up, along with Bob Murphy. And the three of us worked together for 17 years. Kiner, Nelson, and Murphy formed a legendary broadcast trio. They alternated between radio and television, bringing the early Mets games to life for a city of new Mets fans. Well, it was a totally new experience for me to work with them because there was television involved with that. And, of course, that was the new media that came in to do with baseball. And I was a real novice. I mean, both Lindsay and Bob had done a lot of television in their past careers. And so I looked forward to it. And as it turned out, they were the two uh, best influences on my career as a broadcaster. He was and is a unique uh, human being uh, in, in many respects. Num number one, he loved the game. Uh, he loved the New York Mets. He lived and died with that ball club, uh, as did Bob Murphy, as did Lindsey Nelson. Their voices were so much a part of my childhood. Um, you know, I started listening to and watching Mets games when I was six, so that would have been, what, 1964. The sound of their voices, the way they called games was so ingrained in, in every Met fan, but particularly a kid who you know, grew up in New York. Being a Met fan, um, it, was, it was part of my life. Those guys became family because they were in the house every day if I was watching on television. If we were driving in the car, I heard them on radio. If I had my transistor radio going, I was listening to them that way. So for six months out of the year, those guys were almost as close to me as my own parents. It was a real pleasure to work with Lindsay and Bob, and we had a deal where no one was basically the principal announcer. Uh, we all did the same thing. We all worked radio, we all worked TV, and we all worked together. And uh, no one bothered us at all about what we did. As a brand new franchise, the Mets were filling a void created a few years earlier when the Dodgers and Giants fled New York for the West Coast. From that time, New Yorkers longed for National League Baseball to return to the area. This new franchise gave New Yorkers what they needed and gave the talented broadcasting trio a fresh start. Lindsay said one thing to me when I talked to him. He was doing the game of the week at that time and baseball. And he said, you know, one of the great things about taking over the Mets, you're not replacing anybody. You don't have people that uh, like the announcer who was gone or re replaced. And they, uh, so we had no problems with anybody. I said, good, we got baseball back in New York again. 
Kiner is part of a fraternity that experienced the evolution of the way games were delivered to the public. Today, fans benefit from the many camera angles that are used in every television broadcast, but it wasn't always that way. There was a time when even the broadcasters couldn't see the game action they were describing. One thing that really helps when you're doing radio is that you've got the ambient sounds of the crowd and you've got the background that you can draw from in terms of description. I can't imagine recreating a game. I don't know how Ralph, a guy who had come off the field and before very long got into broadcasting, was able to deal with the difficulties inherent in not only creating something that he could see when he's doing a game live, but creating something out of what he can't see, which is what recreation is all about. Recreated games, you can make the whole thing up. Because when it came across on the ticker tape, those games would be in your hands. And uh, all, on, all they'd have on the tape would be, say, a fly ball to left field. And uh, you could make it a line drive, you could make it a diving catch, you could make it an easy catch. Uh, you could say anything. When Ralph Kiner, 50 Amazing Years returns, we relive some of the greatest moments from the groundbreaking show, Kiner's Corner. And we get a rare glimpse at Ralph Kiner away from the baseball diamond. Welcome back to Ralph Kiner, 50 Amazing Years. Over the years, Ralph Kiner has made many contributions to the Mets as well as to Major League Baseball as a whole. The three-time Emmy Award winner hosted Kiner's Corner, a groundbreaking post-game show that proved to be one of Ralph's most enduring contributions. There was not really uh, a Kiner's Corner in the early days. And then when we moved to Shea Stadium, which was being built at the time, uh, that's when they started what, having a studio and the actual Kiner's Corner game. Ralph had such a, a unique way of presenting the post-game show he had a great way of drawing out his guests. He, he made them feel very comfortable, and, and you, could, you could feel that. I have a lot of Kiner's Corner memories, not the least of which when I was on it. But again, the credibility that he brought to that show as a player and then an observer of the game for X number of years made it probably the easiest watched. And it was quirky in its own way, but one of the most enjoyable shows of that format that's ever been on the air. Kiner's Corner was a unique show, different from the pre- and post-game shows of today. Ralph had a plan, and he had the luxury of being in New York, which worked in his favor. All the guys that were on the show in the early days wanted to be on that show because of the exposure for uh, being on Kiner's Corner on that show in the Mets games in New York was a tremendous exposure. And everybody loved to be on Kiner's Corner, especially in the early days. I mean, I remember, I mean, you used to get a $50 Bill, you know, this is way back there. He made it easy for you. You know, they had replays, they did things that uh, a lot of other organizations did not do. And it was kind of groundbreaking, I guess, what they did after the game at that time. Manager Casey Stengel was the show's first guest, and he brought down the house, literally. Stengel left the interview without taking off his microphone, and as a result, the set came crashing down. As the years went on, Kiner's Corner featured many guests, including future Hall of Famers and great players on both the Mets and opposing teams. Kiner's Corner was unique because it was New York, and Ralph had his own little studio next to the clubhouse at Old Shea. I do remember wanting to be on that show. And always remember the $100 bill you got, which went a long way, <laughs> so particularly in New York. You'd have the guys on, they'd come on the set, He'd hand them the $50, and you would have thought these guys uh, had a new contract or something. I was a guest on Connors Corner when I was in the Cincinnati Reds, and we came in here, and I got a couple of saves against the Mets, and uh, going on Connors Corner. As a kid growing up, I always wished uh, one day I could play Major League Baseball. I always wished I could be on Connors Corner, so I kind of got both of those wishes. To get a Chris Benjamin, this is before anyone knew about Benjamins, uh, was one of the great things of all time. And, and people used to fight to be on Kiner's show. Like, what? I wasn't the number one star. You've got to be kidding me. The times that we were on, uh, whoever it was with me, et cetera, the players when we were on Kiner's Corner, they, I mean, they were just a joy. And it was because it was so relaxed, because Ralph was so relaxed. One of the great stories that was told, I had uh, Dick Allen or Richie Allen, whichever one you want to call him, I said, would you go on my show if you have a good day? And uh, he said to me, he said, well, I don't know. He said, you know, your show comes on after about 10 or 15 minutes after the game is over. 
And he said, well, the cold cuts are all gone in the clubhouse. To understand Ralph the broadcaster, you must know a little bit about Ralph Kiner, the ball player, the power hitter, the Hall of Famer. Kiner played in the big leagues for 10 seasons, eight of those with the Pittsburgh Pirates. He belted 369 home runs, highlighted by an impressive 54 homers and 127 RBI in the 1949 season. The thing that I remember most about Ralph Kiner was not how far he hit the ball, but how high he hit the ball and how far. He was a great player. I mean, he was a great home run hitter. Um, he was disciplined. And he, uh, he credits uh, Hank Greenberg with a, with a lot of things that Hank taught him as a rookie. As Yogi would say, he learned me as experience. And, uh, and what he did, he didn't change my swing, it didn't change anything. He said, hey kid, we'd like to take extra batting practice. He was known for working really hard on the city. And uh, I said, yeah, I, I, that was a great throw for me just to be able to have him talk to me. And so I went from there on from there, and he worked with me on uh, actually more about the thinking of baseball and how to anticipate pitches, how to, how to look for pitches, how to uh, know the strike zone, and ended up my second year hitting 51 home runs, all because of Greenberg. When Ralph Kiner was still eligible to come up in the nine-inning game, regardless of where the Pittsburgh Pirates were at the time, people stayed in the stands to wait to see him hit. That, as much as anything, is a tribute uh, to the guy as a player. Kiner, a six-time All-Star, offers strong opinions when analyzing players in the game today. He often draws on his personal playing experience to illustrate a point that he's trying to make. Whenever Ralph says something, you listen, because Ralph's a Hall of Famer, was a very great player and a good hitter. He was a star. He's been a star for most of 70 years. I mean, think about that. You know, this is a guy who went out with Hollywood Starlets, who was a premier home run hitter. But make no mistake, Ralph was a star. So when he speaks about anything pertinent to the game today, it comes from 70 years of experience, and you bet it carries enormous credibility. One of the things about talking to Ralph is that he is he's a textbook. Uh, about the history of the game, and he and he had he is very opinionated too. In 1975, Kiner received baseball's ultimate honor when he was inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. I wanted to go in the Hall of Fame because I thought I had credentials enough to do it. But when I when I finally went in after playing only 10 years, I was one of two other players that went in after 10 years of playing in the majors. A stellar playing career offered Ralph many opportunities away from baseball, which led to his larger-than-life persona. Kiner, a celebrity in his own right, began rubbing elbows with some of Hollywood's hottest stars. Number one, when Ralph was a young man, he was a very, very good-looking man, and he dated all the stars in, in Hollywood. Uh, I mean, and he would tell stories about Janet Lee and the Elizabeth Taylor story. I, I'm sure you're familiar with that. Well, it was another one, one of those fiasco things that happened to you. Uh, I got there because uh, Bing Crosby was making a picture of Connecticut Yankee, which was a great movie. And I was at the city to watch some of the filming of the picture. He said, well, how would you like to go out with Elizabeth Taylor? And I said, well, what do you mean? I would like to. I'd love to. And he said, well, I'm going to fix it up so you have a date with her. So he called the... Uh, PR man of, uh, of Taylor, and they uh, set it up for me to take her out to see a, uh, a movie called 12 O'Clock High. So when we came out, I said, would you pay my car, please? He uh, said, okay, and he said, what's your name? I said, Ralph Garner. And uh, so he said, Mr. Ralph Garner's car, please. Nothing happened. So I said, Mr. Garner, the chauffeur must have fallen asleep. I said, chauffeur, I don't have a chauffeur. He said, well, in that case, he said, the car is right over there in that vacant lot. So I had to walk over and get it and drive it back. That was a, that's why I didn't have the second date. I'm sure that's the reason why. <laughs> Still to come on Ralph Kiner, 50 Amazing Years. Ralph and his colleagues share some of their favorite moments from the past five decades. 
You're watching Ralph Kiner, 50 Amazing Years. Threw out baseball, and there's a base hit in the center field as Santana can't get to it, but he gets over there and makes the catch. So one away, and the batter for the Mets will be George Strawberry. I should say George Foster. Siska's tied with Darrell Strawberry for the National League lead in RBIs. Gary Cooper comes up, and Cooper has been, Kirk Carter, I say, has been perfect tonight. He has been movie-like tonight. George Carlin, they had some outstanding pitches, but it was a great place to hit. Yeah. And uh, our lights are going down. Uh, this now. is a now oh. art film. In all his time behind a microphone with the New York Mets, even the very talented Ralph Kiner had some missteps along the way, including mispronouncing his own co-worker's name. He said, uh, uh, now I'd like to turn the play-by-play -play over to my dear and good friend, Tim MacArthur. And I said, uh, MacArthur. He said, well, what did I say? I said, you said, MacArthur, you're probably thinking of the general Douglas MacArthur. The first time I ever did a broadcast with Ralph, I was filling it on TV sometime in the early 90s, and we were at Wrigley Field, and he said, live from Wrigley Field in Chicago, New York Mets baseball, I'm Ralph Kiner with David Cohn. That was my first introduction from Ralph, so I knew I was in the club. He never got my name wrong. Mine's tough to get wrong, but I know he called Gary Carter Gary Cooper all the time, so, you know, those sort of things. It was always funny. <laughs> Ralph had famously, um, in the past, once said, uh, it's, it's Father's Day, and to all you fathers out there, happy birthday. And Ralph reprised that line on, on Father's Day this year because he knew that it was funny, and he could laugh at himself, and not too many people can do that. I'll never forget, you know, Ralph would say to Tim McCarver all the time, but Tim would say, well, you know, I have a hard time remembering his names. What's that guy's name? Ralph says, remembering names, don't worry about remembering names. Here's what you just need to do. When somebody walks in, you just say, hey, there he is. And Tim said, oh, so you don't need to know that. He said, no, no, I just say, hey, there he is. Well, the next day, Tim walks into the broadcast booth, and Ralph turns around and goes, hey, there he is. And, uh, you know, that's Ralph, you know, and, and, and a guy who pokes fun at himself, and, and everybody loves Ralph. While Kiner never played in a World Series, he considers himself fortunate to be along for the ride to two Mets championships, beginning with that miracle season of 1969. Ralph appeared to be having every bit as much fun in those clubhouses as any of the players, and the players treated him in a fatherly sort of way as though he were just as much part of it as they were. Well, vicariously, he was great. I, I never made the World Series as a player. But I did get the, uh, the advantage of being able to broadcast the World Series. So that was a real great, well, one of my great thrills of being able to broadcast a World Series game. His time in the Mets broadcast booth has solidified Ralph Kiner's place in Mets history. In fact, he is one of the most recognizable figures in franchise history. Ralph's tenure has been filled with many wonderful moments that he shared with a variety of broadcasters and players throughout the years. I've known Ralph uh, almost 30 years now, um, influencing me in the booth. I think uh, all the guys that worked during the 80s, uh, we listened to them, uh, we admired them, and I think most of us uh, admired Ralph even more than anyone else because he did it. He did it at such a high level. He did it at a Hall of Fame level. So um, he was the first guy that um, you know I looked at and said, boy, he was a Hall of Fame player, Hall of Fame broadcaster. Um, I'm certainly not a Hall of Fame ex-player, I can aspire to be a Hall of Fame broadcaster, so I think that's what he does for all of us. His wit and his sense of humor, that's what I like. I like when he jokes, and, but it's, he has a very dry sense of humor. I've had a lot of great experiences with Ralph in the booth, and Ralph was always very helpful to me when I first started, so I didn't know what I was doing. When 50 Amazing Years returns, Ralph Kiner explains the origin of his signature home run call. Real pitch it deep to right field. It is gone and many of his colleagues celebrate the legendary broadcaster. This is Ralph Kiner, 50 Amazing Years. Going, going, it's gone goodbye. Ralph Kiner's signature home run call is something Mets fans heard for years, and it became as much a part of the game as the hit itself. If I can remember Ralph's call, it was pretty understated. He'd say, uh, you know, a fly ball hit to right field, it's going, it's going, and it is gone goodbye. And he would inflect based on the importance of the home run. But he was pretty consistent with that. Going, going, it is gone goodbye. And you know, it was special because it was him. 
Of course, I, all broadcasters have that signature call. And I got in the I, I practiced. I tried several of them and then put it, I tried out on my friends and see if they liked it or whatever. And I finally ended up with It's Gone Goodbye, and that was the, the, the signature I used. And of course, I was identified with that on the broadcast. Today, Ralph Kiner continues to visit the broadcast booth at City Field on a regular basis. The booth is named after Ralph, and he usually joins the SNY broadcast team for a couple of innings during day games at City Field. And even after 50 years behind the mic, the three-time Emmy Award winner continues to offer sharp analysis and insight. One thing about Healthy, he really is not a sinker ball pitcher. His sinker isn't consistent, it doesn't sink, and he now has gone to being a stronger pitcher with a high fastball. A legend in the broadcast booth, just as he was in the batter's box, Connor bestows wisdom along with wisecracks that leave both his audience and colleagues in awe. You know, one thing about stats, though, it's like a woman wearing a bikini. It shows everything, but it doesn't show everything all the time. <laughs> Very well put, Ralph. I never had a grandfather, but I feel like I'm sitting next to a, a like great, great grandfather who's telling me all these wonderful stories by the campfire. That's how I feel about sitting next to Ralph. It's not just that he's telling some stories about some stuff that happened 70 years ago. It's that he's prepared for that day's game. He, he, he studies the other team. He watches the Mets virtually every day. Um, so he's prepared to comment on a lot of stuff that maybe we've been commenting on in a couple of weeks since he'd last been on. And um, to me, it's such a joy having him there. I just look forward to listening to whatever he brings to the table that day because it's always interesting. There's not a day that Ralph is ever in the booth that you say, well, that wasn't very entertaining. You always learn something. I look forward to talking with Ralph. I mean, I, I defer to Ralph because we don't have Ralph there that much. And Ralph's still very sharp and knows the game. So I will ask Ralph questions and I, I will kind of like defer to Ralph because I, I, I want to hear what Ralph has to say. The game has certainly changed over the years, as have the broadcast with new technology and elements. But Ralph has managed to stay on top of it all for five decades, something he cherishes. Well, I'll tell you, I wouldn't uh, trade it for anything in the world because I got a chance to meet all so many great celebrities, presidents, whatever. Hey, 50 years in the booth is a long time. That's long enough to, for a lot of people to live. So I think I join Ralph in uh, saying thank you, Lord, for a great ride. Clearly his love of it, his enjoyment, and it's what, uh, it's kept him around the game. Uh, and you know, and he's overcome physical issues and, and everything in his life to continue to do this because he loves doing it. And it comes through in his, in his telecast. Of course, it is impossible to measure the full scope of a 50-year career. Working with the Mets was clearly more than a job for Ralph Kiner. It was his life, and to some extent, his identity, all of which he is extremely grateful for. I met so many wonderful people, and I had so many great experiences. And I got a chance to be at the White House and met the presidents and all that sort of thing. And so it was, it's been a wonderful life. Yes, Ralph, a wonderful life and a wonderful broadcasting career. But before we say goodbye today, many of your friends and colleagues would like to congratulate you on that tremendous career. I'd like to start. I've only been with you a short time, but it has been just an honor and a privilege to work next to a true giant. 50 amazing years. Here's to 50 more. Hey, sweet swinger. I'm delighted to play a small part in a tribute to you. We miss you as a player. Now I'm starting to miss you as a broadcaster, so I look forward to that moment when we'll be together once again. Ralph, uh, from, from all of us who, uh, who had the joy of knowing you, uh, riding on airplanes with you and doing your Kiner's Quarter, you're the best. I just want to congratulate you on this great honor and 50 years in the booth and being the original Met broadcast team, it's really something and says a lot about who you are and still going strong. Ralph, I don't know how one goes about thanking somebody who's been almost like a member of the family, but that's how not only I, but so many of the Mets viewers over the years feel about you. I feel that I knew you from the moment you came onto my screen in 1962. One of the greatest pleasures I've ever had in this business and really one of the biggest honors was to have been your broadcast partner for a number of years. And I salute you on the icon that you've been, not only to the New York Mets, 
and the Mets fans, but all of baseball for 50 years. Ralph, you are one of my absolute heroes in this world, and it's an absolute privilege to be able to work with you and be around you, and congratulations on 50 years broadcasting for the New York Mets. You are an absolute treasure. Thanks, Ralph. Every single time I sit next to you and we do a broadcast, I'm honored uh, that I can even be in the same booth as you because uh, you've lived it, you've done it, and, uh, and I'm just, uh, you know, almost not worthy. So. Ralph Kiner, congratulations on a remarkable career in broadcasting, in baseball, and in life.